Today, inshallah, we're going to see stream providers, but I'm going also to show you how you can create your own web sockets with Node.js and it is really, really simple. Into the documentation, if you want to learn more about stream providers, you can go on the left menu and as you can see under all providers, uh, you have stream provider, you click here. So basically here it says that, li uh, that Stream provider, it is used to, to listen to Firebase or WebSockets. Inshallah, today, this is what we are going to do. We are going to listen to a WebSocket and Inshallah, the part related on how you can create your own WebSocket uh, with Node.js, we are going to see it at the end because it, it is not the main topic uh, of, uh, of the discussion, but it is uh, how to use stream provider with Riverpod. What are WebSockets? WebSockets are a way uh, that allow us to communicate in both ways. So we can send messages to the server and the server can send messages uh, to the client. And previously uh, they were used other ways, unconventional ways we could say, and they would create a problem. So let's uh, start and go into the main topic. So what we have here, we have two main folders, the client and the server folder. Inside the server, we have our WebSocket that we have created with Node. And inside the client, we have our client that it is our Flutter application. So right now we can click here because in the first part, we are interested in this part here. We have our normal files and under the pubspec.yaml, it is really important that we add our WebSocket channel so we can communicate with WebSockets. So if you are uh, going to use, for example, Firebase, you can uh, use your own packages, your Firebase packages to communicate. Uh, in our case, we are going to use WebSockets. So you can add this package here. We can go ahead into the main. The stream provider works really similar to uh, the future. Uh, it differs a little bit here on, the, on when you are creating it. And let me close this one here. And the first thing that we need to do is to import our just installed package. And here we can define our stream provider. And it is really important to uh, use auto dispose because so we prevent our application to use resources that at that moment, moment are not needed. Here you define an async function. Here defines a, a variable. By the way, this, this code I copied it exactly from the documentation so uh, i'm not going to take the merge i have changed only some things for example how you communicate with the socket and the address that you are going to call uh, so uh, here you call uh, we are going to call our uh, this package here the web socket package and we are going to call this method here connect that will allow us to connect to our uh, web socket uh, in this address here. So as you can see here, uh, it is written uh, OS, that means WebSocket. So as far as you know, uh, to connect to your uh, Android or if you are have uh, an Android emulator or uh, an OS emulator, it differs here, the URL that you are going to use. The port obviously will be the same, but here the U URL uh, will be a little bit different. As far as you know, the Android emulator maps this one to the local host. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, basically the local host is that you're talking with your, your machine, local host, and it is like if you are calling this address here, usually, that it is your local machine. With Android, it maps it to this here because as far as I know, is uh, it is a virtual machine or something like this. So, and this is the port uh, because we have defined like this into the WebSocket. Here, uh, we uh, close the the connection when we dispose, but we are don't really interested in this part. Here, we are basically sending a message to the WebSocket. So we are sending this specific message and inshallah I'm going to show you why, but this allow us to, to go ahead. And then yes, here it gets the stream of data and transform it to string and uh, we get it 
back. Uh, we don't need this here, I'm sorry. Um, so, and okay, and then here we call, we simply call our provider like always with watch, so we can watch for any new stream of data. This is the variable provider of messages. And here, uh, as I said previously, it is exactly like uh, a future. It is an async value that it is a special type created, I think, by the river pod in the river pod package. And you have, as a return, you have data loading or error. And in this way, you 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 can clearly define your your data when you have the data or. Uh, the loading if, if it is loading you can show something that is loading or you can show something uh, during the error and you have a clean uh, a clean way to defend your your informations and this is works also for the future i haven't explained it previously but it works also for the future and also if you want to access directly your 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 data you can type that value and you can access directly your your stream without the need to use data loading and error maybe you want to use your own try catch uh, way of doing things okay and then you get these messages and uh, they get printed out here and every time the text changes with your new data now let's save and first of all before running our application we need to go into the server folder and start our uh, server uh, we can do this with yarn because uh, I have used yarn but if you prefer you can change it I, uh, with npm usually you shouldn't mix uh, those two as you can see here we have a yarn.log if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about don't worry just use yarn uh, it is a package manager like npm like pub because you do uh, flutter pub add and you add your packages and here it is the same thing you can install things etc and we can run commands uh, yarn in this case yarn start because i have defined it like this in my my file that i'm going to show you uh, inshallah in a moment so here we can press f5 to start the debugging process as you can see here it says that uh, it is running on localhost and the port okay now it is connected we have some data from the server and it has replied and now it is running as you can see uh, every time changes and everything works fine so this is how you work with uh, with stream provider so now if you want to go ahead you want to understand how we can create a web socket here inside server this is a simple uh, node.js file uh, really easy uh, we have a package.json with our defaulting so this is the file and the thing that you need it is uh, nodmon so maybe if we are going to use to do any change uh, it will update automatically or you can basically change this with node if you don't want to install this package but i really suggest you to use nodemon so you can make your changes in the index uh, file uh, easily so i'm going to show you even how to install it it is really easy yarn uh, global add nodemon this way it is going to install it globally and you have uh, nodemon globally uh, as far as I know, you can also install it locally if you want, but usually uh, uh, it should be installed globally, I think. And uh, in this way, you can run it anywhere. Okay, so you can retype yarn start. And yeah, that's it. We don't need any dependency. Uh, and we have uh, our WebSocket that it is part of Node. It is an API uh, that is part of Node. And here we require basically our WebSocket package from, from Node. We save it in a variable. Uh, we define a port. By the way, this code I have copied it. <laughs> so, uh, because it is, uh, I don't care. The most important thing it is that it is working because it is not my own project. I don't usually copy 
uh, things only for example uh, for this example i have to show you how it works so it is not the the real point of the discussion so here it uses a simple port and it calls the web socket with the server and it passes the, the the port then here it prints that the web socket is running and the port that it gets from this variable here let me close this so maybe it more clear i'm sorry so uh, and then here uh, it calls the the instance of websocket server that it is saved here and it checks this is a listener that uh, when when it has any connection uh, it saves the current address that it is connected that it was uh, wait a second it is this part here because then it prints it uh, right here with client tp as you can see and then it sends a message in this way you are sending a message from the server to uh, to android emulator indeed if we see for example right here this console refers to flutter and not this one here and as you can see here we have thanks for connecting because it was sent from the server to the client now if we restart you can see the message and it is this one here and then you receive uh, the data we can delete this thing here okay so uh, and then print uh, sends this message uh, just to to show you that you can do a lot of things and here uh, the web socket looks for any message and when it gets uh, any message uh, here i basically check that the message i transform it to string and they check that the message it is exactly like this if it is not it will return and this is where here i do channel sync add send something as you can see here since the message it is sent something it is going to 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 call the the websocket instance and check for all the clients that are connected at the moment so basically yes you can connect multiple devices and it is going to send to all your devices uh, this this thing this message or anything that you want to perform and for each client is doing a simple for each and for each client is going to check the ready state uh, if it is open if it's ready to receive the message and it basically sends uh, an interval of messages B basically every four seconds it uh, generates a message from date that now so the current moment to string it, it just to generate a random number uh, basically and it sends the message so it is an interval that means that every four seconds it executes this function it sends the message from the server to the client this is why here we see those mess these messages and we don't see them here we only see them here with simply using client that send and that's it it is a really simple thing i thought that maybe i can share it with you so you can learn something new something a little bit different maybe you have used only flutter you can also try to play a little bit with with Node.js, it is also a really uh, amazing technology, and yeah. So I think that that's it, and inshallah, I hope to see you for the next videos. Thank you so much for watching.